friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. Today I will teach you how to make a cute and fun paint app using MIT App Inventor. So watch till the end carefully. First we will click on create apps, start new project, I will name it paint and first we will make the front end. We will make a layout for the color buttons, the canvas where the user can paint and a slider bar here for choosing the thickness of the line when the user draws on the canvas. We will go to the layouts, one horizontal arrangement here and another horizontal arrangement here which will come in the lower part of the screen. We will also go to drawing and animation and choose a canvas from here and we will put it here between the two horizontal arrangements. Give this fill parent width and height will be 10% and so is the case with this one and the canvas will be width fill parent and height 70%. We will make all of these black because that would look cool. Now we need to name them appropriately. Inside the color bar we need some buttons. I will be adding four buttons. I will make all of them with height 8% and width 12%. Another thing that I forgot to do was that this color bar, every item in it should be in the center. So by clicking on color bar and going to the properties, I will go to align horizontal and make it center and I will go to align vertical and make it center too. So everything I will put inside this color bar will now come in the center, okay? So remove the text and make this green and make the shape rounder, okay? And I will do exactly the same for three more buttons here. Okay, all four buttons done. I've also named them appropriately so that when I'm actually working in the blocks part, I know which button I'm using, okay? This is very important. Now I need another button for erasing and what it will basically do is that it will just act like a color button but it will use the background color of the canvas and so it will look like as if our drawing is being erased. Okay, so I need another button and I will give it the same size as these color buttons. Now I need to give it an eraser icon on top of it. I will just go to image. I've already downloaded some cute icons for my paint app. Just upload a file, choose a file, eraser, and I have this eraser image here. Similarly, I need another button when I want to start the screen new. For example, I don't like my artwork and I just want to get rid of it without erasing. So another button. Now I want a slider bar for choosing the thickness of the line and I will put it in the middle, okay? And I will give it a width of 50%, ample space for it. I'm going to give the minimum value 2 and the max value 15 for the width of the line and the thumb position is on 2. Another thing that we can add as a fun element to our app is that when the user shakes the mobile, everything will just disappear. It's the same thing as using the new screen button, okay? So we'll go to sensors and add the accelerometer sensor to our app. Okay, so it's a non-visible component and we will be using it in our coding. Now let's get to the coding part, okay? How do we draw in MIT App Inventor? If we go to canvas, we have these dragged and touched blocks. So drag is when you're moving the finger on the canvas and touched is when you just touch the canvas. So what we want to do is that when the canvas is touched, we want a circle to be drawn there, okay? Now, remember we made a slider for choosing the width of the line when it's drawn and the radius of the circle when it is drawn. We need a global variable. While using Scratch, we were using variables for maintaining scores. Similarly, we have variables in MIT App Inventor too. And we want this variable to be a global variable. Why? because we want it to be accessed by multiple places. We do not want it to be restricted to a certain block, okay? So global means can be accessed by all the blocks inside your code, okay? 
So I'm going to name it dot size and I'm going to give it a math value of two. So this is basically our initial dot size, okay? And we want that when the canvas is touched, a circle should be drawn. So if we go down here, we have this call canvas dot draw circle. And this procedure takes in these input variables, X and Y, that is the X and Y coordinate of the screen where it has been touched by your finger. So we just need to give, get X, the X value, the X coordinate to center X. Look, if I take the mouse here and just hover over it, I get these get Y, set Y blocks. So just drag them and put them in the appropriate places. Just plug them in. So center X will get the X coordinate, center Y will get the Y coordinate. The radius should be the global dot size. So if I go to variables, I get this get block from here and I choose in it the global dot size. So the radius will be according to what the user has chosen in the slider bar, okay? And the default is two. And the fill is also true. That is, we want it to be a filled circle where the user has touched the screen. Similarly, inside the canvas, if we go there, we have this drag block. It has multiple input values too that it automatically gets when the user drags his or her finger on the screen. And we just need the previous and the current, okay? So we want a line to be drawn from the previous XY coordinates to the current XY coordinate. So we go again to canvas and we go to draw line. See, it's taking X1, Y1. These are the previous X and Y. So if we hover over previous X, we will get the X from here. So this is done. Now you must be wondering that where is the dot size coming? Okay. So when the screen is initialized for the first time, we want to set the line width. So we go to the screen and we have these blocks when screen one is initialized, that is when the app is initialized, okay? And what we want to do is that we want to set the canvas line width. If we go down, so set the line width to the global dot size, okay? So I can just duplicate it from here. What happens when the user changes the, the dot size, the line thickness size, on the slider. When the thickness bar, that is a slider bar, is changed, its position, the thumb position on it is changed, an event is triggered. And when this event is triggered, we get the new position of the bar. So using the new thumb position, we should set the dot size to that new thumb position. If I go to variables and I get the set block from there, I can choose dot size and I can get the thumb position by hovering over this variable and this is set. And now I need to set the canvas line width to the new thumb position. When the green button is clicked, I want to set the canvas paint color to green, okay? So set canvas paint color. If I go to color blocks, I will get these colors from there. And I will do the same thing for all remaining three buttons. For the eraser button, same code, just duplicate it, choose eraser button and set the canvas paint color to the background color. So if I go to canvas, I can get the background color from there. Remember we had a new button too. So if I go to new button and when the new button is clicked, just do canvas.clear. And remember we had the shaking sensor one, accelerometer sensor. So when it is shaking, that is the user is shaking the mobile, the canvas should clear. Now we will come to an interesting part of our app. That is when the user chooses a color, that color button should be highlighted in some way that it has been selected. So I thought that the best way to highlight it is to make it bigger. For that, I will be needing four global variables. Two are for the not selected width and height and two are for the selected width and height, which will be slightly more than the not selected color button width and height, okay? This will make more sense when I will make it in front of you. So let me quickly make the four global variables. As you can see that the not selected height and width is the default 
size of the button that we chose when we were designing the buttons on the designer screen, 8 and 12. When any button is clicked, for example, the green button is clicked, what we want to do is that we want to make the green button bigger, that is, it should have a new height and width percentage, the selected height and width percentage, and all the remaining buttons should have the not selected width and height button. Now, I will be duplicating a lot of code here, but I want to make it a simpler way of making this app without using procedures at the moment. I will be introducing procedures, that is functions, in some other tutorial. By the way, I want this to be the default color. So let me take it to initialize. When the screen is initialized, I want the color to be green, okay? And when the screen is initialized, I want the button to be bigger. The green button should be highlighted from the very beginning. So how can we do that? If we go to green button, we can change its height and width percentage. So set height percentage of green button and duplicate it and set the width percentage. And what should be the value? We will be using the global variables. Get selected height, duplicate it get selected width, okay? So this is for the screen initialization part. That is the green button should be chosen from the very beginning and it should be highlighted that is bigger from the very beginning. Now we can just duplicate our highlighted code, highlight the green button when the green button is clicked. But what about the fact that some other button might have been clicked too and it might be highlighted too. We're just going to set all these three buttons and the eraser button to the not selected height and width, okay? I will be doing the same thing for all the buttons and I will make sure that only the button that has been clicked, that is the green button or the blue button or any of the buttons, color buttons or the eraser button, I will just make that one bigger and I will make the remaining four buttons to the original size, not selected height and not selected width. So I will just quickly do it. So this is done. Depending on what button has been clicked, I'm just changing its height and width percentage to a new height and width percentage that is slightly more than the default one. And I'm making sure that all the remaining buttons are set to the not selected height and width percentage. So it's basically just duplication of code. So this code is done. This is a working paint app with that fun feature of highlighting the color button that has been selected by making it bigger. And it will look quite cool with the black screen. Another thing is that you can, by going to the designer view, and if I just click on the screen, you can also upload an icon for your app. I already have a cute paint icon. Make sure it's a square. Now when you will install the APK on your mobile, you will have that icon of your Paint app and not the MIT App Inventor default icon, okay? So I hope you like this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do so. Please share my video with your friends and family. All my classes, Mental Math, Coding with Scratch, MIT App Inventor, and I've recently started Arduino. That is the introduction to robotics. All of these classes are 100% free. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day and goodbye.